Hello world, welcome back to the Razer RC and want to share some tuning tips. I do have my Savage X V2 GT6 4.6 CC engined nitro powered vehicle and been running this over at the local BMX park. Uh, have some uh, tips and changes I made, modifications to the vehicle I want to share. As again, a big shout out to your RC for sponsoring this series of videos. We do have 5% off coupon code. This truck is actually cheaper from your RC than you can get in the US. Just make sure you throw down uh, your shipping address to get the shipping information as well as the currency that you're using. And I think you'll find a uh, pretty uh, compelling and competitive pricing uh, from your RC, whether you want this or an X-Ray or an Arma or Trax, whatever you want. But uh, yeah, that does help support the channel. So go ahead and check them out. So I thought I'd kind of do a little bit of an update and show you what I've changed and why. Uh, some stuff I've talked about a little bit in the past, but um, yeah, definitely been some setup changes. Just trying to get to drive a little better. I am running the engine guard here which uh, does kind of raise up the body. I mean, you do have to raise up the body a bit to get to clear all this stuff. So makes it a little more top heavy. I'm not sure I really want to go that way. I'll just run like an engine head protector or something like that. But as you can see, it's getting a little dinged up there. So trying to protect that a bit. But uh, some driving characteristics I've noticed with this vehicle is it drives quite a bit different than the Flux version. I also have the Savage X Flux. Totally different car, actually. You'd think they would drive the same. They are nothing at all alike. The Savage X Flux is actually more of a stunt truck. It handles quite well uh, out of the box. It's a really, really nice driving vehicle. A couple of little modifications you should make, but for the most part, you can pretty much just run it as is. The uh, Nitro version, totally different vehicle. Obviously, the power delivery, all that stuff is different, but I want to talk about the handling a little bit more. Uh, it is much more top heavy, way more top heavy. As you can see, you know, most of the uh, engine, everything is kind of above the chassis there. You got all this stuff way above the chassis. On the Flux, you got the batteries, motor, everything's kind of like in line with the chassis. So it's more of a, you know, almost a LCG style type of vehicle. It drives much more like that. I mean, it does roll and stuff like that, but. Nowhere near what this is. This feels like you're almost like driving a top. You know, everything is up high and then you're, you know, you got your tires and stuff at the bottom, but very, very lightweight on the bottom, very, very heavy up top, especially once you got a fuel, full fuel tank, all that kind of stuff. So I am making some changes. Um, I did actually increase the rear shock oil. I think I'm running 35 weight, if I'm not mistaken, in the rear. Uh, still got the 30 weight up front just to get a little more damping in the rear. I'm also running two millimeters of shock limiters within the shocks themselves. So inside these shocks, I did pull off the piston, put in two millimeters. I think you need three and a half millimeter uh, clips or some kind of spacer or something like that. I just grabbed some TLR. Uh, I guess they're three and a half millimeter uh, shock spacers or shock limiters inside the shocks. That basically reduces the amount of shock travel so that the shocks don't extend quite as much. It actually helps it roll a little bit less because the whole truck, when it rolls, and that's really the major problem with this thing, it's so top heavy, it kind of rolls back and forth quite a bit. But when you put shock limiters within the shocks, it actually reduces basically the shock travel and it's, it's not going to roll as much because it's not trying to lift the inside uh, wheels as much. So it, it stays on the ground a little bit more. Obviously, if you had um, sway bar or something like that, that would also perform a similar function in a different manner. Uh, that's it for the shocks. I did also change out the brake pads. Um, I'm running carbon fiber brake pads because I did find that the, uh, what are they called? Sort of the, the pink... Uh, I don't know what it's called, fat fibrous material or whatever. Um, it was getting chewed up by these brake uh, calipers, or I don't know what you call these, these little brake uh, pads. Um, yeah, it's just going to kind of get torn up. I think one problem with this vehicle is like oil kind of drips out. The exhaust pipe obviously gets all over the vehicle, kind of soaks into those brake pads. So I just found them to kind of get torn up a bit. So I'm running carbon fire brake pads. It worked totally fine. Bit of a pain to install. I found it easiest to actually just pull off the front end basically remove all these plates and stuff like that and pop it out uh, just so you can get this drive shaft out of the out drive there so you can pull everything off a lot of tiny little spacers here so a bit of a pain to install this thing uh, just make sure you don't lose anything there's also a little brass 
uh, piece inside the brake system um, that push basically like the piston that pushes against these uh, calipers. So essentially, uh, make sure you don't lose all that stuff. I did drop a, a little overing washer, but eventually found it. So a bit of a pain to install that, but um, yeah, I just find these to be a little more durable, and obviously you can still run them at the same distance, so uh, no no issues there. Obviously, I'm running a different pipe. The composite pipe that came with the vehicle did break out of the you know, probably on like the 10th tank or so um, at the BMX park. It's just a composite plastic piece. It cracked, uh, was no longer usable. So I am running this uh, $50 pipe from eBay. It's called the Tize uh, pipe. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes much of a performance difference, but um, it is there and I am running it. And, uh, you know, it's not particularly expensive. A nice little aluminum piece. Uh, other than that, I am running aluminum uh Clutch shoes inside the clutch bell, the stock, uh, whatever the Teflon pieces or wherever they are. Um, they just wore it really fast. I mean, it did break in the engine with the tires on the ground, so they were probably spinning a little bit, but just didn't have much bite. Uh, so the aluminum pieces with the stock springs works totally fine. They will engage a little bit early in the beginning until it kind of breaks in. After that, it seems perfect. Uh, you know, the, the basically the automatic transmission type thing is working great and then other than that uh i think that's about it for the changes definitely might want to lower the body again uh, once you raise it up you know it is a fairly heavy body uh, it does have this additional bracing stuff inside um, so all that weight up top in addition to the engine which is way up top makes it roll quite a bit much more challenging to drive uh, oh yeah two-speed transmission i've also made a change uh, so I'm running only, I think, three turns out from all the way down. So I like it to kind of rev up a little bit higher before it engages. So uh, that seems about right to me. That makes it handle a little bit better, a little easier to drive. Uh, and, you know, you kind of still get that initial punch off the line uh, with that additional revs running there. Um, final thing is I did strip the spur gear at my last bash, so I'll share some running footage. Uh, that area is quite rocky. I'm not really sure why it's stripped. Um, I've got the slipper clutch basically backed out one quarter turn. Uh, maybe I'll loosen a tiny bit, but I'm going to order up the steel spur gear. I don't really know why they came with the plastic spur gear. I never really had an issue with my uh, flux, but uh, maybe it's the rocky conditions. A rock got stuck in there. I'm missing a bunch of teeth that I, you know, all got chewed up. So. Uh, you know, not particularly great. Uh, and finally, I am running a medium OS8 uh, glow plug. It seems to have a little bit wider range for tuning. Uh, the cold plug that comes with this, probably geared a little more towards a higher nitro content. I'm running 20%. I think you can run a little bit hotter plug and uh, makes it a little bit easier to tune and, and keep it running. Uh, and I think that's a bit. Oh, I did change out the steering server as well. I bought like a cheap $8 Hobile servo off like... Uh, eBay, one of those parts uh, like chop shops or whatever. Um, just a little more torque, uh, so a little bit easier uh, to control the steering blocks and stuff like that. So yeah, anyways, that's it. I'll share some running footage now. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, share, subscribe buttons. Look for more videos soon. Thanks for watching.
Can't see it? No. <laughs> 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 